Hey everybody, it's Rich Toll, and thanks for tuning in to Tola Talks, my 21st century talk for a no-bullshit world. Well, today's Freaky Friday, and who doesn't want to provide the best possible learning experience for a child or a loved one, especially around these holiday times, right? Maybe you're going shopping today for Black Friday, and if you are, you want to be thinking about how can I buy that perfect gift for a child, and what is the perfect gift? We're going to be talking about that today, because yesterday at dinner, last night at Thanksgiving, I saw a child under the age of two, kind of freaked me out, I'll talk about that a little bit later, but uh, you know, kind of interesting, Freaky Friday, we're going to get to that, but if you missed yesterday's show, it was Throwback Thursday, we threw back to 1621, to the date of the first Thanksgiving Day feast, so check it out at richtola.com. Right? You could find it there as well as my rich picks. We uh, have about 25 best of the best from my 60 shows on LA Talk Radio. So check that out. Also, check out the live music at richtola.com. And if you uh, want to follow me on the social, it's at richtola. You could also email me or Twitter me if you have a question. You know, shoot me a question or email at info at richtola.com. Love to answer your questions on the air. And if you want to advertise or Maybe get some shout outs. Check it out. There's an advertise with us tab on the website. Yeah, check that out. And speaking of shout outs, let's do some celebrity birthday shout outs. This first one is a rest in peace shout out. She would have been 47 years old today. Who are we talking about? Anna Nicole Smith. Everybody knows her officially born as Vicki Lynn Hogan. Yeah, the model, actress, TV personality. She was Playmate of the Year in 1993. Hugh Hefner, I think he discovered her, put her on the cover of his magazine on March of 92. So, uh, yeah, previous year he said she was going to be the next Marilyn Manson. But most people know her, Anna Nicole, from her marriage to the oil tycoon and octogenarian J. Howard Marshall. I mean, did she do it for the money? I mean, if she did, who cares? Who cares if she did it for the money? I mean, she met this guy at a Houston strip club, Gigi's, right? And she ended up marrying him. She was 26, he was 89. He was falling in love with her. I mean, so what? So what? She fell in love with her. And who cares if it's over money? So many people do things over money. Well, we know her story. There was a lengthy legal battle after she died of a drug overdose on February 8th, 2007. Kind of went on for about 10 years or so. But this is what's interesting. She reportedly never lived with the man. She never made love to him. She never kissed him more than 10 times on the mouth. Did she love him? She said she loved him. Uh, she was married for uh, 13 months until he died at the at the ripe age of 90. So rest in peace, Anna Nicole Smith. So what if it was about money? Number two here. How about this? I love this guy, John Stewart. Uh, born as Jonathan Stewart Leibowitz in New York City. He's 52 today. Yeah, Big John, a political satirist, stand-up comedian, TV host. Everybody knows The Daily Show. Now a director, kicking butt, hosted the 78th and 80th Academy Awards. Yeah, he did his stand-up debut at the bitter end, I know it, at uh, 147 Bleecker Street down in the village, Greenwich Village in New York City. Uh, he debuted there in 18, 1987, and uh, we know The Daily Show didn't come about until about 12 years later. But here's what's cool about Big John. He was a bartender at the legendary City Gardens Club in Trenton, New Jersey. I mean, my father, I owned a property nearby, but my father was a barber right around the corner about a half a mile away. And he called it, finding this place, City Gardens, was like, oh, maybe I'm not a giant weirdo, right? It was a place of great possibility. Well, speaking of City Gardens, right, the Ramones played there more than 25 times, right? Butthole Surfers played there, Green Day, R.E.M., I mean, everybody played there. The Beastie Boys played their shortest set ever, the shortest set for a headline act. They played for 20 minutes. Reportedly got drunk at a local bar, showed up for their for their set at 1.30 in the morning, and you got to close it too. Um, who else debuted there? A Flock of Seagulls, Thompson Twins, Sinead O'Connor, and Danzig. Man, I remember the uh, City Gardens Club back in the 80s. It was huge. All right, who else? 55 today, Judd Nelson. Remember Big Judd? Judd Nelson's been around for more than 30 years. I remember him the Breakfast Club. Remember that from 1985 with Ali Sheedy, Anthony Michael Hall, Emilio Estevez, Molly Ringwald. That was awesome. He was the criminal, right? Uh, John Bender. I love that movie. That was awesome. St. Elmo's Fire. Remember, he was the Democrat, became the Republican. Uh, um, Ali Sheedy, I mean, 
Everybody was in that. Uh, who was it? Andrew McCarthy, Emilio Estevez. Yeah, he's done a bunch of stuff. He's been in more than, I guess, 30 plus years. I don't know how many films he's done. Love Judd Nelson. Yeah, remember Rob Lowe, Demi Moore. Those were the days. There you go. Now let's move on to uh, On This Day in History. You know what we like to do? We like to cover this a little bit. Let's go back to 1932. Groucho Marx performed his first... He was on the radio for the first time. And you know, this is sort of a radio YouTube show now. You want to check out the MP3s, go to my website. It's easy there. But he was the master of quick wit and widely considered one of the best comedians of the modern era. Way to go, Groucho, on this day. 1933, one year later, Dallas Grand Jury uh, delivers a murder indictment for who? Bonnie and Clyde. Right. Bonnie Parker, Clyde Barrow. Right. They killed the deputy, Malcolm Davis. Well, they killed at least nine. They claim nine police officers, several civilians in their outlaw period from 1991 to 1934. Only lasted a couple of years. Yeah. The couple was eventually ambushed and killed in Louisiana. We know that story on uh, May 23rd, 1934. Yeah, we know it from the film, the 1967 film, right before I was born, with Faye Dunaway and Warren Beatty. That was a classic. And uh, by the way, she was 23 and he was 25 when they got gunned down. What happened on this day in 1974? John Lennon, the great last concert appearance with Elton John. It was an Elton John concert at Madison Square Garden. Yeah, he performed. Uh, he performed there, and he didn't. He was killed uh, six years later on December eighth, nineteen eighty. We know that. But uh, yeah, John played his last. And flashing forward in 1994, we're talking 20 years later, the serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer. Remember him? Wacko. Uh, He called them the Milwaukee Cannibal. He raped, murdered, and dismembered 17 men and boys from 1978 to 1991. Well, he was clubbed to death by an inmate, good thing, at the uh, Columbia Correctional Institute in a gym. Yeah, go figure, Jeffrey Dahmer. And in 1997 was the, on this day, the final episode of Beavis and Butthead on MTV. (laughs) I'm thinking, uh, it ran from March 8th, 1993 to this day on 1997, right? It was revived in 2011 for just a couple of months, but it's about, everybody knows Beavis and Butthead with Mike Judge, who does all the voices of two socially incompetent, they're uh, rock-loving teenagers, uh, right? Wannabe delinquents. Oh my God! They could be, they were barely literate, and it was like cool, man. And uh, this sucks. Remember, <laughs> I remember that. But anyway, it's all this day in history. All right, moving on. And because it's Freaky Friday, we're gonna go around the globe for the latest news, and we're gonna combine this with the Get Your Shit Together Award because. This is freaky. These five stories, they all have to get their shit together because it makes no sense whatsoever and you can't be a freak. Here we go. Five-way tie. A naked man. Do you hear about this at Logan Airport? That's in Boston. This guy's from Boston. 26-year-old Cameron Schenk. Okay? Naked guy. Goes into a ladies' room, bathroom, gets undressed, climbs up into the uh, the rafters there, right? And he ends up falling falling through when a woman's there. And then he runs out, viciously attacks an elderly man, okay? Tries to bite off his ear, choking him with, his, with the guy's cane. I mean, what a wacko, right? He gets uh, arrested. Attempted murder, assault and battery, lewd, lewd conduct, malicious destruction of property. I mean... What a wacko. I mean, it makes no sense whatsoever. Talk about a freak. All right. How about this woman? We're calling this, you know, get out of jail free card. I mean, this lady needs a get out, get out of jail free card. 21-year-old hookset New Hampshire woman. She's arrested on domestic violence charges while she was playing the game of Monopoly. I mean, talk about a wacko. She flipped out. Alyssa Ferraro, yeah, Paisano, she started fighting with her boyfriend when they're playing the game Monopoly. I mean, what the hell is she thinking? They arrested her. She slapped the guy around. They arrested her on, uh, gave her $2,000 bail to get out, but she really needed to get out of jail free card. I don't know. You go, you got to get that upset over a game. <laughs> I haven't played that game forever. By the way, the entire game is based on, um, uh, land and streets, etc., and hotels in Atlantic City. Not too far from where I grew up, Trenton, New Jersey, near City Gardens. All right, this next story, I'm calling it Oingo Bongo. You know the great band Oingo Boingo? Oh, I love I love those guys. With them. Remember the Rodney Danger film, Back to School? Well, that's Oingo Boingo. Well, this is Oingo Bongo. What are we talking about? Iowa City. Police responded to a call. Check this out. 
Someone who's making a commotion outside an apartment complex. 19-year-old girl, Jalen Turner. Okay, she's, they said, yelling and kicking the window of her, of her apartment, flinging furniture over the balcony. Why? Because she couldn't find her keys. Hey, honey, don't be an idiot. Because what happened? The fire department gets there. They let, let her in. They finally get her in. And guess what they found? Two bongs, right? You know, the big water bongs, right? A grinder, an electronic scale, and two pot plants. Okay, so here's this 19-year-old. Here's this 19-year-old flipping out to get inside her house. She gets inside and she's got all this paraphernalia. Well, she was arrested on charges of controlled uh, substance violation, uh, Iowa drug tax stamp violation. Mm, what the heck is that, right? And uh, possession of drug paraphernalia. Most embar- embarrassingly, a disorderly house. And this lady's a whack job. All right, how about the third story? We're talking this. Wrong taxi. All right, check out these guys. Three robbers in remote Guinea. Okay, they held up nine passengers in a taxi. They stole their wallets, their phones, their jewelry, and they stole a cooler bag full of Ebola blood. Blood with Ebola in it in vials. They stole this blood, okay? All right, what what are they thinking? They're thinking craziness, okay? Of course, you don't want to be carrying around Ebola blood. But what I'm thinking is, why are they traveling, nine people? Why is someone traveling with Ebola blood in a taxi cab? That makes no sense whatsoever. Talk about freaky. That's really freaky. Talk about spreading a disease. That makes no sense whatsoever. But hey, what are you going to do? That's what <laughs> That's what happened. Yeah, the authorities said uh, the blood... They said how they handled the blood. They said the thieves should be careful the handling of the blood because it will be dangerous. You think? Yeah, no kidding. I don't know. That makes no sense. How about this next one? We're calling it That'll Cost You. How about this? A Russian tourist, right, who's in Rome at the Colosseum, major landmark, gets hit with a $25,000 fine. Why? For inscribing a 10-inch tall letter K on the wall inside Rome's Colosseum. That's right. Well, what's so special about that? Because for the last 2,000 years, well, this landmark's 2,000 years old. And they said back in the days when 50,000 people used to watch the gladiators fight the lions in this Rome Coliseum, they said they used to scroll on the wall then. They get 6 million visitors a year. How many people do they catch? About six. This guy's the fifth guy. (laughs) This is the fifth guy caught all year. Uh, doing vandalism to uh, the Coliseum, right? The other four were, it's an Australian father and son. Seems like these young, a Canadian teen and a Brazilian teen. I mean, what are you thinking? $25,000. I mean, that's the way to go. You want to make these so expensive that you deter anybody from doing it, right? We talked about that yesterday where those six bozos, they, the idiots in New York City that line the uh, Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade threw things out the window, they should fine them with a huge fee to prevent them from doing it again or to dissuade anyone else from doing it because it makes no sense whatsoever. All right, there you go. You get your shit together award. It's a five-way tie. We know what that's about. You got to get your shit together based on my 30-episode podcast of the same name. G-Y-S-T. Okay, here we go. It's Freaky Friday, right? And you guys know we shortened up these episodes a little bit to keep them a little tighter, 15, 20 minutes. Then we're going to be adding some interviews to that, maybe some live music, love live music. But let's talk about this because last night I was having dinner. I had a great dinner, by the way, Thanksgiving dinner. And here I am and I'm looking over here and I see this. This girl was under the age of two. Okay, she could barely walk. How do I know that? Because her mom walked her to the bathroom, held her hand, and the the girl could really barely walk. So she had to be maybe a year and a half old. And she's standing there, I mean, standing there, she's sitting at the table with like clutching her smartphone, and she's glued to the smartphone. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't stop looking at this little girl thinking, what the hell? I've never seen such a thing. First of all, I don't have any children, but this little girl is glued. Now, the parents, they don't care because hey, they're going about their business, drinking, having a good time. And this girl's, you know, totally amused. Makes no sense. But what do you think about that? Here's what I think. Well, let me tell you what the American Academy of Pediatrics says. Television and other entertainment media should be avoided for infants and children under the age of three. No kidding. All right. Germany, the child psychologists believe it should be avoided under the age of six. I'm going to go with Germany. I think you got to be five or six years old before you're even looking at these screens. Finland, Spain, and Poland say it should be age two. 
Okay, why? Okay, well, let's talk about it. Okay, here we go. This is get doing some research. Screens are a surface that create an alternative world. You think? Yeah, no kidding. It's not real. So these kids, they're how are they grasping what's happening in that picture? Because it's not it's not really real, but to them it is real. The way this girl was, I mean, this girl was so engrossed, it was uh, unbelievable. It's like she was watching the Academy Award film. Right? Number two, it interferes with comprehension. That's what the experts believe. They say, for instance, parents reading to a child, it enables the child to focus on the interactive elements and not just on the story. So they're not interacting. What's a child doing? Interacting, seeing things moving on a screen. Makes no sense to me, people. Number three, it says it doesn't deliver, it never delivers the range and quality of the linguistics cues of a human speaker. No kidding. What happened to the human interaction? You got to have human interaction. These little children are in the formative years. We know all about that. Number four, pure entertainment and it's not educational. I'm all about that. It's got to be educational. You got to be educating a two-year-old child less than two years old. What's it about entertainment? Yeah, I used to have building blocks. I remember that was like the greatest thing. My old man took us out. We bought this all these building blocks. I had best fun building blocks. And eh, anyway, we're going to move on. Number five, long-term effects. They don't know what the long-term effects are of interaction touching a screen. We don't know that yet, right? They said touch is the first means of communication and learning with an early, in your early childhood. So touching, now you're touching a screen. How does that become real? Makes no sense to me, people. I don't know. And all this stuff, we're talking nature. What about nature? Physical exercise, having the kids kind of get out and run around, right, in the sandbox. One-on-one play time. What about the one-on-one? They're one-on-one with the screen. I don't know. Makes no sense to me, but to me, it's a little bit of freaky. Here are the stats. One in five parents uses a smartphone to keep their kids distracted while A, running errands, or B, out with their friends with food. Makes no, makes no sense to me. Isn't it a little rough on the eyes, people? What about talking about a well-balanced life? Interacting with other children, interacting with your parents. I don't know, but uh, to me, the brain is going to go to mush. And these kids are going to grow up relying upon this little screen, which may one day never be there. I don't know, but to me, that's freaky. Well, that's our show for today, folks. Freaky Friday. Hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, you can check us out. Check out all the shows on my website, richtola.com. And uh, hey, if you guys are out shopping today for Black Friday, be respectful, not disrespectful. Like I read about some bozo in Costco who cut somebody with a with a box cutter. Don't be doing crazy shit out there, people. Keep it together. Be respectful and be respectful of yourself, right? If you didn't work out today, today was the slowest day in the gym. I went to the gym. There were fewer people than there were yesterday. Get your butt to the gym. I put on a little bit of weight, about a pound and a half. You know, I like to get on that scale every day. Get on the scale. Check your weight. By Monday, you'll be back to normal. I sure will. Well, I'm Rich Tola. And remember, dreams do come true. But hey, what do I know?